talk. Let's have a chat. I, I don't know. You know what? I don't want to rank them. The thing about with this batch of flutes is that they are all very similar to each other in many ways. There are two though that I have ruled out in terms of me buying. The two that I have ruled out are the Miyazawa 202 and the Haynes Q2, which is weird to me because I've spent probably the better part of a decade thinking that the Q2 was really, really amazing and it was like my dream flute. Because I tried a Q2 at a flute convention one time and of course it was better than my flute and now I'm with all of these flutes and I'm realizing I don't, I don't like it so much. Overall, very nice tone. I like its tone. It's a nice balance between sort of a focused tone that really cuts through and not being too fuzzy, but it's also not too sharp. You know, there are some flutes where there's like the amplitude of one particular set of frequencies is like way, way higher than the others. It's always there on some of these flutes. And I don't really like that. I like to have a more rounded, smooth, kind of buttery tone, but not fuzzy, right? So a nice balance. Um, and it's got a very nice third octave, beautiful flowing third octave, and they're very much in tune, but I don't like that the first octave is just kind of average. It's better than my flute, but it's not as good as some of the other ones. It's a little bit fuzzier and the attacks are, are not very responsive. The harmonics are really, really easy to play on the Q2, almost to the point that they're too easy because I was actually having trouble controlling them to stay on a note and they would just pop up into the next register without me actually wanting them to. Next is I probably the, I don't know. I can't keep all of them straight. They're so sim it's so subtle that I can't tell. Um, the Miramatsu has a good low octave. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I don't have anything especially good to say about it. It's just kind of a, a good low octave. Most of them are around similar in this range. The high octave is nice. I think the Miramatsu has a slightly less nice third octave than the, uh, the Haynes. The Miramatsu has a very nice tone up there and it's relatively easy to play. It's not as good of intonation. The overall tone, the Miramatsu is one of the, one of the three here that have a more cutting tone. There's more of that single frequency or set of frequencies that really cuts through, but it's not the, the most prevalent sound. And so for that reason, I kind of like it. It's a little bit sort of more on the buttery, rounded kind of kind of end, but it's, it's very hard to tell. They're very subtly different. Um, the harmonics on the Miramatsu, when I tried it a couple days ago, let's test it again. Okay, it's not nearly as hard as I thought it was before, but it's still not super easy breezy. But it's not as easy as on the Q2, and I don't think it's as easy as on the Yamaha. Yeah, it's definitely easier on the Yamaha. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier on the Yamaha. I think the, the Q2 is the easiest, but maybe it's too easy. The Yamaha is, is, is pretty easy. And then the Miramatsu and the Miyazawa are kind of similar. Um, and then finally, the, um, the softness. Now I didn't actually test this really carefully with the Miyazawa and the, with the Q2, um, because at the, the point in time that I was testing this out, I'd kind of already ruled those two out. But with the Miramatsu and the Yamaha, I was testing out how easily I could just taper down a note in, in dynamics um, down to nothing. And seeing how easy that is and how soft you can get and how it sounds, right? And so the result of that is that it's, I can do it on both the Yamaha and the Miramatsu. And it's, it's fairly similar in, in, in how difficult it is. It's not too difficult is what I mean to say. But the problem is, is getting softer uh, really carefully and just tapering off is fuzzier on the Yamaha than on the Miramatsu, which is kind of a drag. Um, here, I can just demonstrate. So this is the Yamaha. Okay. 
All right, so there's kind of this whistling fuzz as I get down there. And then the Miramatsu. You know, there's still a little bit of kind of hissing, you know, um, part of it's probably me, um, but um, it's it's less pronounced on the on the Miramatsu. But currently, those are those are my top two of this batch. God, I'm getting I'm so sidetracked. So I don't know what I've discussed now. Overall, the Yamaha is a lot easier to play than most flutes. It's just very easy. Things just. The attacks are clean, the notes come out, there's, I just, I feel very breezy, easy breezy cover girl <laughs> playing the Yamaha, just really easy. But overall, I think I like the Miramatsu's tone better, and especially I think I like the third octave a lot better than the Miramatsu. The Miyazawa, I don't know if I mentioned this, I really hate the third octave in the Miyazawa. It feels choked. It feels really fuzzy. There's a very high pitched kind of whistling fuzz that comes with it. And it's just not flowing and easy and wonderful. It's just, ugh, it's unpleasant. I don't like it. My flute, I'm realizing actually has not bad uh, of a third octave. It sounds very nice. Like, the tone is nice. It's a nice sweet tone. I do sometimes wish it was a little bit easier to play. The other thing is that the Miyazawa has a whole bunch of different head joint cut options and materials. So, 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 so many. We have uh, one, two, three, we have four different head joints out right now with the Miyazawa. I only recorded one. I only recorded the MX2 because it's the one that we have that's all silver. And I can't, I don't know. There's like two or three head joints that have got kind of like this really steep drop off off the edge of the, the embouchure plate. Let me show you what I mean by that. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. If you look at the lip plate, there's, you know, the part where your lip goes and then there's the hole and then there's this region, which on my flute and on some flutes, it's just, it continues the same curvature as, as over here where you put your lip. But on some of them, like the Pearl Forza or the Dijau head joints that we had out earlier and on several of the Miyazawa head joints, they have a very sharp drop off. The curvature really changes suddenly. And I've noticed, I don't know if this is actually the intention. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, I don't really understand how this all works. I've noticed that head joints that have that kind of drop off, they tend to have more of that sharp focused, really knife cutting sound. And the ones that are more rounded have more of the soft, fuzzy type tone, you know, warm, I think is how people might phrase it. So I, I personally kind of like something in between, something in the middle, because when I was trying the pearl head joints, they have the Forza, the Brezza, and the Largo, and they visually are a gradient in how steep they drop off. I noticed that there's a, a difference in that sharp tone as you go from the, the Forza to the Brezza to the Largo, and it just that sharp tone drops off at each step. So anyways, we've got, we've got a couple head joints that are like this kind of shape with the Miyazawa. One of them is the silver one, which is the one that I recorded. And another one is, it's, it's a different cut, but it um, has a gold riser, but it's the same kind of shape. And then there's two other head joints that both have gold risers that are slightly different cuts. One of them is still kind of a steep drop off, but a little bit less. And another one is a little bit more of a smooth thing. So I don't know. And I didn't test them all because it's kind of overwhelming. And I feel like there are slightly different characteristics of all of the head joints on the Miyazawa, but I didn't really care about any of them enough to make this flute worth it for me. So that's, that's that. I don't know, this descended into confusion <laughs> and chaos. And now this clip is 22 minutes long. and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Hope this was helpful to future me. <laughs> probably not. You probably won't remember anything and it will be confusing and you'll hate it. There's no such thing as a perfect flute. I don't know, we'll see.